Okay, welcome to Bonn. Um, uh, I'm uh, uh, delighted to be joined with uh, by uh, Selina Hook from IIED, and I'm hoping that you're going to be able to give us a bit of a wrap up over the uh, uh, last two weeks. It's a bit of a monumental task, and especially uh, the uh, what's been going on in the last few hours in, in the plenary hall. It's, it's not not great news. Well, the last two weeks uh, we did make uh, some incremental progress. I think the mood was good. People wanted to make some progress. Unfortunately, the last few hours we were hoping to finish things up in time for everybody to go and watch the the, the soccer uh, World Cup opening, which happens to be between Mexico and South Africa, who are the next uh, presidencies and locations of the COP. So that sort of adds a little bit of uh, a frisson here. But unfortunately, the plenary seems to be carrying on. Uh, but it, it's quite clear what the outcome of these two weeks are. Um, there has been some progress, but not enough progress. There, they, ha they are moving towards a negotiating text that can be uh, brought forward to the next session in August. I don't think they'll conclude it here, which was the hope, uh, but they'll have it in August. The, the August session is a week-long session, which will be an informal session, which is actually a good thing where they can talk to each other more informally rather than just repeat positions, which tends to happen in the formal negotiations, uh, and then make progress on the text, which then would go to the October session in China, which would be the next formal negotiating session. But negotiations are um, peculiar in the sense that once the decisions are made to make an agreement, then negotiations can be finished very quickly. Uh, and these decisions uh, have to be done in smaller informal settings where people talk to each other, get a common ground and understanding. And the chair has actually done a very good job of that. And I think she uh, Margaret from Zimbabwe has gained the confidence of all the parties. They, they feel she's doing a good job. They've entrusted her with the job, but un unfortunately hasn't been able to finish it here. Hopefully by the next session in Bonn in August she will be able to do that. It's interesting. You say the chair's been uh, doing a good job, and perhaps that's not the impression that our viewers at home might have, because uh, we've seen pretty much every country on the planet slamming this new text and saying to her, you know, you've gone beyond what, what can be expected of you. This, is, this has to be a negotiation between countries, and, and it's not down to you to kind of present, a, you know, to try and present a, a specific answer. That's true, that, that's sort of the formal position. But even so, you'll see, even when they object to something in the text she presents that they feel is either incorrect or something, or their views have not been incorporated, they always ask her to go back and do it again. So they're not saying, you know, we don't trust you anymore, which is what happened in, in Denmark with the, uh, the uh, Danish presidency. In this case, they're saying, please go back to the drawing board and, and redo it to reflect our views. So in that sense, they haven't lost trust in her. They're just asking her to keep working on it. And I think that's basically what bond, this bond meeting will, will end up doing. Ask her to do, go back to the drawing board, try and fit in more views from parties who felt their views hadn't been incorporated, and then come back with text at the next session. And for people who've been uh, following this for the last couple of weeks, um, uh, I guess one of our markers for success was having a, having a text to come out of these talks, and now it looks like we're, we're not really going to quite achieve that, and maybe we'll have something ready for August. Um, you know, ha have, the talks been, have the talks been successful? You've mentioned there's been some progress, um, but I is it going to be enough? I think um, one has to say that we haven't made a great deal of progress in terms of the larger picture, but I think the, the mood has shifted for the better. There, there is a mood for trying to make some progress, trying to make progress where it's possible. And I'll give you a couple of uh, examples, very small things that were held up in the past that did get resolved here. They're, they're under the scientific body for science and technology, something called the Nairobi Work Program on Adaptation, which needed a second phase. They have decided that there was a, a, there's a, another track on observations and research, they've decided that. So these are, are, they're not major issues, but they were all held up before because nobody would agree anything until everything was agreed. But they're now allowing themselves to agree some little things. And in a sense, the, the division is between what negotiators who are coming here who are officials from their governments can sort out amongst themselves. And as I said, these are a few minor things that they can they, uh, make decisions on versus the larger political parts of the puzzle, which are uh, above their pay grade, if you like. It ne needs finance ministers and indeed heads of state to sign off on. Obviously, negotiators who are the ones here can't sign off on those. So they have to go back to the capitals, consult, and, and tell their, their political masters, 
what the mood of the other side is. So if we give something, then it's likely that they'll come. So there, a lot of informal discussions need to take place, and and they are now taking place in a much more uh, progressive or a, a, an attitude, even from the United States, which is quite good, I think. That let's get something done here. And, and uh, yeah, you spoke to us at the start of the week and you said that one of the key things that needed to give here was finance um, and specifically short-term finance, this, this so-called fast start funding. Um, this was essential to kind of lubricate the talks, if you like, and, and, and get some progress. And uh, has that happened? Yes and no. Uh, what has happened is that the developed countries who made the promise in Copenhagen of 30 billion over three years have, haven't really worked out who's going to give how much. They're doing that now. But what they've heard here, and I think they have heard it and they're taking back with them, is that it isn't enough to just declare you, you, you are going to give so much and, and this is how you're going to do it. You do have to listen to how the other side wants that to be delivered. And they're getting that message, I think, that, that it needs to be clear and, and uh, new and additional. How are you counting that? Which channels are you giving it through? I'll give another example of a very interesting the, the, in the area that I follow, which is the adaptation funding part of the funding package. Uh, there are various options. It's very clear that the developed countries prefer to use their own bilateral development channels like DFID in the UK, USAID in America, or the second best option is the World Bank, where they feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, and they've tended to just exclusively fund those uh, bodies. On the other hand, the developing countries are saying, well, we don't object to those bodies being used, but there are other funding channels that we have set up under the Framework Convention for the Least Developed Countries Fund, for example, the Adaptation Fund, and we'd like some funds to flow through those. And in the last few days, uh, Spain, Germany, I just heard Monaco, have actually said that they will put some of their money through these funds. So they are listening and they are hearing these messages and trying to accommodate them. Obviously. The outcomes of negotiations means neither side gets everything they want, uh, but each side has to listen to the other side and try and give them something of what they want. And uh, we've mentioned the, the informal coming up in August, and, and then of course we have the meeting in, in China in October, I think, and, and before we hit Cancun. And then there's some other kind of milestones on the way there as well. We've got the G20 meetings. Um, what needs to be achieved at these meetings? What kind of uh, what what packages need to get get agreed um, in order to make Cancun uh, some kind of relative success? In my view, the main uh, package that needs to be agreed in Cancun is the short-term financing. If the short-term financing at the political level and then at the technical level gets sorted out, then three of the tracks, negotiating tracks, can be concluded in Cancun. These are adaptation, red forestry, and um, uh, technology. With 30 billion short-term money, all three of these can be, we can have a good work program in the near term that we agree on. And then the longer term can be uh, resolved later. And, but these, these decisions need to be done at the, min at the finance minister's meeting of the EU and the G20 and so on. They're, they're the ones who have to decide. The negotiators aren't the ones who can give 30 billion away. Their finance ministers and the heads of state are the ones who, who will have to make those decisions and then uh, pass the message on to the negotiators to put it into the language here. And so these other meetings are important in that sense for the political masters to make those decisions, uh, make funding available, and then that to be brought back to the negotiations in August and then October and then hopefully in Cancun at the end.